I'm gonna show you how to make this weird, hauntingly beautiful terrain in ArcGIS Pro. And here's a version of it without the dark outlines. Oh, and I stole the idea from a robot. Here's Esri's glorious Instagram account. One time, many weeks ago, they shared this smoking hot image of AI generated terrain. And in a moment of absolute hubris, I challenged myself to recreate it. AI art is just a derivative of its training source, but so is mine. What happens when AI art is part of my training data set? It's a derivative of a derivative. A derivative. -a -derivative. Let's derive. Here's the most handy website I've ever seen for downloading NASA's space shuttle topography data. You have to have a NASA account, but check it out. Here's that digital elevation model in ArcGIS Pro. Black areas are areas of low elevation and white areas are high elevation and the gradient of gray is everything in between. I want to generalize this raster data, so I'm going to smooth it using the raster functions. I'm gonna open up the statistical group and I'll choose statistics. And then I'll average it out over a 12 pixel window. And the result is a softened smoothed, slightly blurry elevation model. And a not so secret trick that I like to do is blur the blur so I don't have any artifacts from that process. It just makes for a better, smoother result. Then I can get rid of these two input layers and just keep my blurry layer. And now I'm going to open the analysis tools and fire up the contour tool available in Spatial Analyst. And this tool is lovingly tended to by my friend at Esri, Steve Lynch. And this is the Mount Hood area, so there's a lot of topography, and I'll choose a contour interval of 50, and the units match the coordinate system I'm using, in this case meters. Now the contour type choice can be a little tricky. Yes, we want polygons, but we want them to be special polygons, like stacked up pancakes, and that is called contour shell up. And it doesn't take very long because we have this generalized imagery. And now we have a beautiful set of stacked up elevation pancakes. And all the rest is visualization chicanery. Here's the trick. My layer is 2D. I just vertically offset the polygons so that higher elevations move further up. I'll open the symbology panel and I'm going to change the primary symbology to single symbol. And this is key. I'm going to turn on the allow symbol property connections option. And this lets me link up every visual variable to data. Then I can go into the structure and add an effect called move. And I'll do this for both of these symbol layers, the fill and the outline. And this lets me nudge these items in any direction. So I'll set these back to zero because I'm gonna hook them up to an attribute. So for the offset Y option, I'm gonna click this little database can and I'm going to choose contour minimum. And that's the elevation for my polygon. And it blows out each of these like a stack of cards that have just fanned up across a table except I've fanned them out way too much. So I'll open up this database button again, and I'm gonna modify the formula. And I'll just divide this by a factor that I found works well. Divided by 10, okay. Now the effect is reduced tenfold, and now I get a cool, trippy, fake 3D effect. Now, of course, whatever offset formula I give to my outlines, I have to do the same thing for my fill. By golly, we've done it. We faked isometric 3D in 2D space using nothing but our wits and world-class GIS. And next, I'm gonna steal the colors from my reference image. I'll sample from low to high and build up a color gradient. And I'll apply that gradient here in the very symbology by attribute tab. I'll expand color, set the attribute to contour minimum, which is its elevation. And I'll expand this color scheme and choose format color scheme. And I can just set it up here. Color, color, color color, color, color. Which I have to hand to the robot looks pretty cool. It's not the most logical color scheme and it's definitely not colorblind friendly, but it's interesting looking. And now it's time to hack some shading. I'm gonna go into my primary symbol. I'll choose the symbology to dig into that. And I'm gonna make this a gradient stroke. And this is gonna serve as like a little crisp highlight edge. I'll make it kind of thick, four points, and so it renders only on the inside of the polygon. I'll give it a negative offset of two points, half its thickness. And even though it's more computationally expensive and will render a little slower, I'm gonna set it to accurate. So I'll make this gradient go from semi-transparent white to fully transparent white. And I can always open up the color properties of this gradient and tweak it, which I will, making it pretty faint. It's just a lighting effect. And I'd like to bring some of the interesting bits of this color scheme down to lower elevation. So I'll go back to this color control and just goof around with this slider until it looks good to me. I mean, I'm 
basing this on an AI map. A little bit of housekeeping, I can get rid of this original DEM, thank you very much NASA. And I'll rename this layer to be Color Base so I can keep track of it because we're about to do some weird stuff. Now I had originally struggled getting my fake shadows to look the way I wanted them to in the symbol layers. And then my friend Tommy Fuval was like, why don't you just make a separate layer for lighting? Never, wait, always have friends who are much smarter than you. So here's that duplicated lighting layer. And I'm gonna open up the color option here. And I don't wanna use color. I'm just gonna neutralize this, set it back to none. And I'm gonna make everything white because this whole layer is just gonna be shades of gray. So I'll go into this lighting layers symbol structure and I'm gonna drag that gradient line underneath my white fill. And instead of a white gradient, I'm going to make it a black gradient, so various shades of semi-transparent black. And the result is a sort of drop shadow effect under each elevation layer. And when we take a look at what we get, it can be kind of confusing. Oh, that's because it still has that negative offset, so it's rendering inside the polygon and getting covered up by each layer of elevation. Let me just get rid of that negative offset, and I'll make my stroke width much thicker to 8 points. That's better, now we have shady rings around each polygon, but they don't look very realistic because they don't behave like shadows do. They don't cast a shadow down. We need to adjust its vertical offset. So I'm just gonna go into this formula and subtract six points. Now it'll fall down six points. A lot like the ending of many Detroit Lions games. Now if we take a look at our original AI reference, you can see that each one of these elevation bands has a thin black stroke going around it. And the black stroke is a little bit thicker at the bottom edge than it is at the top edge. So back in our structure tab, I'm going to add a new symbol layer and this is gonna be a stroke layer. And I'll drag this stroke layer underneath the fill layer. And then back in my layers tab, I'll just make it a little bit thicker. I want this to look slightly more naturalistic, so I'm gonna give it a very faint wave effect. And instead of a regular sine wave, I'll make it random and I'll decrease its wave height to one point and increase the wave length to eight points. And it definitely doesn't look right because we haven't done our vertical offset hack to this new symbol layer yet. So I'll add an effect called move and the same old thing. I'll connect it to the elevation attribute and then I'll divide it by 10. And now it'll match the rest of the fake 3D symbol layers. Except this time I'm gonna subtract one from it. That way it renders more on the bottom of the polygon than it does on the top. And then I'm gonna do the same thing one more time. I'm gonna add a stroke layer. This time I'm gonna put it on top of the polygon. I'll give it a random wave effect. So it's got some hand-drawn wabi-sabi. And of course, I'll have to give it that vertical offset hack. Now here's the payoff, a little bit of magic. I'm gonna give a blend mode of multiply to our lighting layer and only the darkness shows through. So without the shading layer and with the shading layer. And I'll just reduce the overall effect of this layer by giving it a transparency of 50%. And this gives us that cartoon-like inked effect, but I'd like to add some more realistic lighting now. So I'll duplicate this layer by holding the shift key and dragging. And I'll open up the symbology panel for this second lighting layer. And I'm going to turn off my two thin outline strokes. And I'll make my shadow stroke a lot thicker, 20 points. And then I'll open up my vertical offset hacks formula. And instead of six points down, I'm gonna make it 10 points down even further. So it's a more dramatic shady effect. And instead of a multiply blend mode, I'm gonna give it a color burn blend mode. And that'll make the hues much richer in the shaded areas. And this is looking pretty cool, but not cool enough. Because if you look at the original, you'll notice it's got a cool kind of poster paper texture. I want to touch it. How can we do something like this in ArcGIS Pro? I'll show you. I've added to Living Atlas a whole bunch of paper texture tile layers. And one of them is poster paper. So with the add data dialog active, I'll search Living Atlas for poster paper. Here it is. And I'll just drag this poster layer above the color base and the cartoon lighting overlay layer. And it's a little washed out. And so I'm going to give it a layer blend of color burn. And if the effect isn't strong enough, just duplicate the layer. And if it's still not strong enough, duplicate both of them. And then I'll just grab half of my poster textures and stick them on top of my topmost lighting layer. And then I'll drag the other two below the other lighting layer. So it's like a poster texture sandwich. It's a subtle difference, but I mean, it's lighting. That's the name of the game. And here are some of the exports. Pretty fun and pretty close to the original source. And I'm using real honest to goodness geography. As frequently happens with these sorts of adventures, I took a detour along the way and turned off the cartoon outline lighting layer. And I actually liked the result a lot better. AI isn't the boss of us, yet.
Hey, Pepper. 